Hello, I am Marika Kapojirgakis. You may call me Mary. I am the writer of MK's Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, Word is the Bird, as well as Cupcake War Machine, which is my big project going on right now. You can find me at Patreon, MK underscore wizard, or Linktree, MK underscore wizard, which has my links to everything, including ways to support me, to vote for me, and find every single one of my socials. And you're watching Two Geeks Talking. Good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Two Geeks Talking is an entertainment industry interview show where we interview the creative people from the comic, film, TV, movie, and video game industries. Of course, I'm your host, Kurt Sasso. We are joined today on another interview on the show here, talking with a creative person in the entertainment industry, this time in the comic field. She has been on the show before. You remember her work from Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde series that she has created, which is still an amazing series. If you haven't checked it out, check out the past interview. Today by the ever talented Mary. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. And you, how I'm, are you? I'm doing good. For those that don't know anything about yourself as a creative person, tell us who you are and of course, what you're bringing to Two Geeks Talking. My name is Marika Kapujirogakis. Of course, you may just call me Mary. I am a stay-at-home wife and mother of one. I like to bake, I like to sew, and most importantly, I am a full-time webcomic creator. I have three webcomics to my name. My first one, as uh, Kurt mentioned, is Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde which is completed now. And my second one, which is still ongoing and just a very small gag -a day family comic, Word is the Bird. And my current big project, which is actually near completion even as we speak, is Cupcake War Machine. I didn't realize that Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde had, had completed. Congratulations on that. That's That was a fun series. Thank you very much. I was very proud to uh, stick it out. And I intend to do that for many projects to come in the future. Cupcake War Machine was something that you hinted at on our last interview, and it's been all, all over a year almost at this point in time since our last time we chatted. Tell us what Cupcake War Machine is all about, because I, I love the art style. I love everything that you've done so far that I got to read through. This is an amazingly fun and colorful comic. Cupcake War Machine is a series that was inspired by two very important things in my life, my past and my present. Namely, in how my present did not turn out the way I thought it would in the past, I'm actually very happy that it is the way it is now. Cupcake War Machine is about a war machine named Android who fought in the Fourth World War in uh, 2500. But what had happened is that during his first mission, he got severely injured, so to say, and went into a coma for 500 years. Then he wakes up around the year 3000, we'll say, and his body has been recycled into a new one, a more tame one, and he's given the new role of being an assistant cupcake and cookie baker. And he hates it. <laughs> well, I mean, career changes are always difficult, that's for sure. <laughs> It's not just a career change for him, it's a whole life change. I mean, a lot can happen in 500 years. That's true. <laughs> we unfortunately won't be around to see what happens in 500 years, but hopefully the comic remains available for the masses. It's what I'm aiming for. Your world that you've built here and your, and your cast of characters, let's describe some of the characters that you've created for this, because like I said, they're, they're, it's beautifully drawn and colored and they seem very energetic and engaging as well. In short, the characters are both caricatures and at the same time deconstructions of many common tropes you see in the 80s and old anime. Especially Stella Starchild, who is Warwick's uh, foster big sister, so to say. She's a trope on that female uh, companion who's usually very aggressive to the uh, male protagonist to the point where she even gets physically violent. Mm. As you can see, Stella is nothing like that. Stella is surprisingly patient, even uh, for dealing with somebody like Warwick. She's compassionate, she's kind, and she reacts with uh, good nature. Well, namely uh, the protagonist, let's talk about him. Warwick is the caricature of your typical 80s action hero and also your protagonist in anime, specifically tournament anime where the guy is ultra focused on uh, winning the tournament, being the best at what he does. But the deconstructed part of it is that being too engaged in winning and too in competitive and too fixated on your goal 
can get very toxic mm -hmm. to the point where you lose sight of the fact that these things like prizes and all that, well, first of all, they don't matter as much as you think they do. Like everybody wants to win, but it's not the end of the world if you don't, which gets to point two is that even if you win or you lose, you have a life to get back to, to think of at the end of this competition. The way you act, it matters. The way you treated people matters. The impression you left on everyone matters. And also you have to have a plan for the future. It's, and that's something Warwick doesn't quite have yet. Great that you're, you're taking the time to construct these characters and to actually give emotions when it's very easy to fall into the tropes of comics and anime have done in recent years. I find that some of the things that comics and anime have done comics more is that I find that they've forgotten that it's important to make these characters relatable and very fleshed out. You can't just make them into one thing, like the guy who's action-oriented, the guy who's broody, the guy who's funny, and be nothing else. I mean, just we as people, we're very complex. It feels like the, the cookie-cutter aspect of character creation has been taken to that next level where they're only one-dimensional even though they're in two and 3D spaces. That, and it's, it's not good. We owe it to our audiences to give them well-written characters. Not many creators either have time to do that, or maybe they're doing multiple projects and can't focus in what their current project is as much as we'd like them to be. I think it's a lot of factors, and it's not really up to me to judge, because I can't judge what goes on in a person's personal life. Mm -hmm. But all I can say is that it's not entirely bad either, because I myself am focusing on multiple projects. And when I am focusing on a current work, I give it my all and give it my focus to make sure that it's as great as it can be. That includes characters. And you see that in, in your Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and of course you definitely see it in, in Cupcake War Machine as well. What has been the fan reaction to your comics? Because I, I see it on, on my social media feeds, I see it pop up, I try to like and retweet as much as I can, but what have been some of the reactions to your characters and the comic that you've created? Not to toot my own horn, <laughs> but uh, People love it, and it, it makes me very happy. A lot of people have even compared to my work to having ties to the 80s and anime, which is what I was aiming at. And to see them detect that, it makes me happy. It makes me feel like I did everything right. So the fan reaction has been stellar, actually, for what it is, especially for a small one-off comic. Cooking is always a passion and a solace for many people here as well, too. Obviously, cupcakes are one of your themes of your comic itself, and I, I know you've done other things things as well too. Some recipes that are comfort food to yourself and to your family that you may bring into this comic. Well, you've pretty much seen it already. It's uh, a lot of the cupcakes, the cookies, and especially the recipes you see in the recipe section of my website. But a lot of the recipes that you see online, like a lot of the creations, especially the competitive ones, they're not stuff that I could ever make, but they are stuff that are inspired by things I've seen in cooking competition shows. And obviously I'm not trying to copy, Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to do my own original thing, but I think of what would be worthy of being a showpiece and take it from there. What's your go-to recipe that you can always turn to that either reminds you of a, a wonderful time in, in the past or a current time in, in the present? It has to be my chocolate chip cookies. Everybody who eats them loves them. I myself love them. My son loves them and my husband absolutely loves them. Every time he wants me to bake, they are one of the number one things he requests. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. I do blonde brownies myself. So that's something I've I've been perfecting over the past 10 or so years. So Sounds delicious. You said that this comic is almost completed, which is sad in a way, but are you looking forward to the completion of this? Yes, I am actually, because my next big project is one that I'm very excited to get onto. And I'm hoping that this is, how can I say, my next big step. So I want to finish this one so I can finally focus on that one only. The manuscript of book one for my next project, it's about halfway done. And then once that is done, I can finally start doing the comics while working on book two of the manuscript. I mean, just the fact that it's more than one book long, it's uh, telling. Do you have a, a title for it or? Yes, I do. The title is 
Psychoborg. And this one is uh, highly inspired by also 80s cartoons, specifically things like Visionaries, He-Man especially, She-Ra, and things like that. It also is inspired by Star Wars. I would say that in a way that's a comic as a love letter to my husband because he's a big Star Wars fan mm -hmm. and he's a very big fan of clever writing and such. Basically, it begs the question of the He-Man setting is what if Skeletor was actually the good guy mm -hmm. and He-Man completely misunderstood his own situation? And no, this is not like She-Ra, <laughs> not at all. Because a lot of people said that that's essentially Shira's plot, but trust me, it's not Shira's plot. Psychoborg is also my first ever comic that is not going to be aimed at children at all. This is going to be my first for 100% adults work. There will be like on-screen uh, action and even uh, the presence of blood, even especially swear words from the titular character Psychoborg himself. Yeah, he has a bit of a dirty mouth. <laughs> That's just to give you an idea of how not cutesy and what a big departure from my usual storytelling is going to be, but of course I'm still holding it to the same high standard and very complex characters, complex storytelling, and enjoyable experience for the reader. But yeah, that's the big thing with Psycho Borg. Mm -hmm. And my fans are even aware that it's uh, coming to fruition after Cupcake War Machine, maybe not as soon as it ends. Mm -hmm but it will uh, come up and people are already excited for it when I describe it to them. How long do you think this series is going to, to go? It's going to be two books long. Like the two books are literally uh, the volume one and two are separated as light and dark. Okay. Yes, it is going to be a very long-term series, very big series. I'm hoping that this is also going to be the, my uh, next big step. My uh, recent big step when I finally published my first book, which was Cupcake War Machine, volume one. Crowdfunding campaign. Yeah. Yes, it was take this moment to thank everyone and everyone who supported me in every and any way. Thank you. You made that possible and I love you for it. It's great to have support from a fan base that you've been building for a while now and, and I'm glad to see that, like you said, your next step is going to be the Psycho War. So I, I can't wait to to see what you have in store for that and tell us all about it because I'd love to see comic format you're going to use for it and, and your styling and everything like that. I'd love to be here again. In fact, I intend to come back because it's always a pleasure to talk with you, Kurt. You're a wonderful host. Oh, well, thank you. You're, you're an amazing person yourself for pursuing your passion and your, and your dreams here and, and bringing joy to the world with everything that you've created so far, uh, even if you're going down the, the adult path in your next series. Thank you. And well, I like to switch it up. Like nobody likes to write the same way all the time. It's like eating. If you eat the same thing all the time, even if it's something you like, you get tired of it. You have a great idea. Why not go with it? Oh yeah, you have to. I mean, but that's why we're creative people in our own rights, in our own styles, because we are just the way we're built. <laughs> Yes. Is there anything I haven't touched on you'd like to showcase those that are watching and listening to this interview? Well, what it is, is that volume two of Cupcake War Machine will come to print as soon as I am done writing it in the background. I'm happy to say that this time I don't need to do a crowdfunding because I managed to save the funds necessary from commissions and supporters on my own time. Be on the lookout for when it uh, comes in my store because it will be ready and waiting for you. Well, Mary, I do hate to say it, but that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. I want to thank you again for coming on the show. And thank you again for having me. It was a lot of fun to be here and I will definitely be coming back. Wonderful. I, I look forward to seeing you again. Before I let you go, where can we find you? How can we support you? And of course, where can we see everything that you have online as well? As you can see, there's my social media, there's my web comic site, and also I have a Patreon at uh, MK underscore Wizard. I also have a Ko-fi page. I have a link tree that has the links to all of these things that you can check out. The link tree link is on my uh, Twitter page, which you can visit right by following the handle at the bottom here. I'm also on Instagram and Tumblr if you want to find me there. But yes, everything and anything you need to find is on my link tree. Well, like I said, that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. You can, of course, find this interview and a thousand plus others on our website, tgtmedia.com or twogeekstalking.com. That's the word two, not the number two. Our YouTube channel, which is a lot more updated than our website, which is youtube.com forward slash C forward slash TGT media. And the podcast is actually back finally after 
12 years. You can find that at twogeekstalking.podbean.com. Find it on all of your favorite streaming services. And as I say every week, everyone has a story to tell. It's up to me to help bring that out. Thanks for listening and watching on Two Geeks Talking.